Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. And in this, uh, this is now question number three from the October 2022 Pure Mathematics P3 paper. Um, and here we have a question where we're given this graph of this function, this curve with the equation y equals f of x. And they told us the equation of the curve is f of x equals x minus 2 all squared times e to the power of 3x. And x can be any real number. They told us that the maximum turning point is A and the minimum turning point is at 2, 0. And we have to use calculus to find the exact coordinates of A, which is the maximum turning point. Okay, so now to find the turning points in a graph, what we can do is we can use the gradient function. At the turning points, the gradient is equal to 0 because the graph turns at that point. So if I was to draw a tangent at a point where the graph turns, like at A, you can see that the gradient there will be zero. Okay, the tangent will be a horizontal line. So we know that at the turning point, the gradient is equal to zero. So we can say at A, the gradient is equal to zero, and the gradient is given by the gradient function. The gradient is equal to zero, so therefore, we can say the gradient function, which is f dash of x, or dy dx, if we're given it in terms of y, is equal to 0. So first thing we've got to do is you've got to find what f dash of x is. We've got to find the gradient function. Now, when we have to find the gradient function, we have to differentiate this expression. Now, this is an expression which is made up of a product of two separate functions, two completely separate functions which are not related to each other. It's not like a function inside a function. It's a function multiplied by another function. And when we are trying to differentiate those, something like this, we cannot just differentiate one of the products and then multiply it by the differential of the other. That's one of the common mistakes that people make in this topic. No, we have to use what's called the product rule, where um, we have a formula that we use in order to differentiate something like this. When you have a product of two separate uh, you know, functions together that we want to differentiate. And we also have the quotient rule if we have um, like a quotient, a fraction. But here we're going to use the product rule. Right? Now, a very easy way to remember, to, to remember how to use the product rule without actually memorizing a formula is as follows. Um, and this is the way I like to do it. I, I call one of the products, one of the products, I call them u. It doesn't really matter which one. So I'm going to call x minus 2 squared. That's u. So this is one, this is one of the products. And the other one, I'm going to call it v. So I'll say v is equal to e to the power of 3x. Now we're going to differentiate u and differentiate v. So when you differentiate u, you can use the chain rule here. It's probably easier than expanding it. You're going to have 2 times, and you have x minus 2 to the power of 1, and then multiplied by the differential force inside the function, which is 1. You'll have 2, two times x minus 2. We could have expanded it, wrote it as x squared minus 4x plus 4, and then differentiated we've got 2x minus 4. Same thing as this, but I think it's easier to use the chain rule here. So you multiply by the power, take one from the power, and then multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, which is just a 1 anyway. And then when you, inter when you differentiate, sorry, um, e to the power of something, it just stays the same. However, what you have also is you have to multiply it by the differential of what's inside the function using the chain rule. You have a, diff you have a function inside the function, which is 3x, so when you differentiate e to the power of 3x, you get the same thing. That's how you differentiate the main function. And then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. So I multiply by 3. So I have 3 e to the power of 3x. Now, using the, the product rule, what you do is, um, and this might be slightly different from what you've seen in the books, but this is the way I like to do it. I always like to go this way. Okay, I always like to go this way. All right, so I'm going to multiply these two together first. So I have e to the power of 3x times 2x minus 2 to the power of 1. So I'll multiply these two together first, and then I'll multiply those two together. The reason I like to do it this way is because when we use the quotient rule, we, we have to do this times this minus that times this. Here we have to add them together, it's a product rule. So we have to add 3e to the power of 3x times x minus 2 all squared. And that's it. But for the quotient rule, what we'd have to do is this, like for example, if it was x minus 2 squared over e to the power of 3x, for example, then we'd have to multiply this with this and then subtract these two 
multiplied and then divide by the differential by the the square of that number right that's the that's the quotient which is something slightly different but i like to use the same order of, of multiplication so i multiply this with this and then add the product of those two for the product rule it really doesn't matter which way you do it but the quotient rule it does because you got to subtract that's why i like to keep the same order so this times this plus that times that so 3e e to the power of 3x times x minus 2 squared that is the gradient function so now we have the gradient function and now what we're going to do is we as we said i'd say the gradient is equal to zero so we're going to take the the gradient function and we're going to equate it to zero so we're going to have 2e to the power of 3x times x minus 2 plus 3e to the power of 3x times x minus 2 squared is equal to zero now we want to solve this equation now this equation can be solved quite easily by taking out uh, common factors all right factorizing okay so if we see that the common factor of one of the common factors is e to the power of 3x and the other one is the bracket x minus 2 that's a common factor in both these two terms e to the power of 3x and x minus 2 so if we then write down what's inside here e to the power of 3x times x minus 2 has to be multiplied by 2 to give us this term and e to the power of 3x has to be um e to the power of 3x x minus 2 has to be multiplied by 3 and x minus 2 if i multiply these two together i'm going to get 3 e to the power of 3x times x minus 2 squared so i have to write this inside the bracket and that's equal to zero so i have e to the power of 3x times x minus 2 times this is going to be 2 plus 3x minus 6 so it's going to be 3x minus 6 plus 2 that's 3x minus 4 equals zero so now i can solve this equation i can say either e to the power of 3x is equal to zero or x minus 2 is equal to zero or 3x minus 4 is equal to zero well this is undefined there's no solutions to this but here you have x equals 2 that's one of the places where the gradient is zero and that's the place that they told us that's where we have the maximum point uh, sorry the minimum point that's the point here two zero okay so that's where um, one of the places where um, we have a turning point and the other place is going to be x equals 4 over 3 3x minus 4 equals 0 so that must be the coordinates of the point a the x coordinate of the point a must be 4 over 3 now it says write down or use calculation to find the exact coordinates of a so don't forget to find what y is now y is the same as y is equal to fx which is equal to as we saw in the beginning um, x minus 2 squared times e to the, e to the power of 3x x minus 2 squared times e to the power of 3x this is what y will be given by and we want to find y when x is equal to 4 over 3 so when x equals 4 over 3 y equals x let me put it as 4 over 3 4 over 3 minus 2 squared times e to the power of 3 times 4 over 3 okay so this is going to be um, 1 on 1 third which is going to be minus 2 that's going to be minus 2 thirds squared which is 4 over 9 times e to the power of 4 okay and we can verify that if we want to to verify that we put this in the calculator we have 4 over 3 minus 2 whoops minus 2 squared that gives us 4 over 9 and of course that's going to give you e to the power of 4 because the 3's cancel so that those are the coordinates of the point a so a has a coordinates for x x is 4 over 3 and y is 4 over 9 x uh, e to the power of 4 sorry e to the power of 4 okay so we now have the coordinates of the point a and that's the answer to question 3 part a all right so now we're going to go on to part b now part b we know that a is equal to 4 over 3 and 4 over 9 e to the power of 4 okay we know that those are the coordinates of a right and it says given that the equation f of x equals k where k is a constant has at least two distinct roots state the range of possible values for k so f of x equals k is like y equals k now if k is a constant that constitutes basically a straight line a horizontal line okay this is the line y equals k okay this is the line y equals k this is a straight horizontal line 
Okay. So what I can do here just to make it clearer. All right. So that is a horizontal line y equals k. All right. Now uh, we want to find the range of values of k such that f of x equals k has at least two distinct roots. Now there's a very important thing. Whenever you see something that's been put in bold type, should always make you wonder why is it in bold type? Okay. That's something very important. So it's saying at least two distinct roots. Now, if we think about this, this is the line y equals k. Now, the roots are where f of x equals k, that where f of x and k intersect. This is the equation. This is y equals f of x. Oops. This is y equals f of x here. That's the equation of the graph. And this is y equals k, which is the line. Where they intersect, okay, is where the roots are. Where, where the roots of f of x equals k, okay, is where f of x and k intersect. Okay, where f of x is equal to k. So we can see here that we have, in this region here, just one root. There's one place where they intersect. Okay, in this region over here. And in the region down here, there's no roots. Okay, now, in this case... All this region, there's three roots. Now it says at least two. At least two means two or more. So here, there's no roots. And we know the value of A, the Y coordinate of A, goes up to 4 over 9, E to the power of 4. And it's an exact form. Okay, so we know that that is that point A. Above that point, there's only one root. At that point itself, there are at least there are there's a, there's one repeated root and there's one distinct root so it's at least two roots here okay so that that's one point where there's going to be at least two roots which are different from each other that's what means at least two distinct roots okay so that's going to be one point so that's going to where that's going to be where this condition starts okay and then we can see that everywhere below that there's going to be three roots which is at least two. Three means at least two. It means two or more. So there's at least two roots here. All the way down until, okay, we reach when y equals zero. When y equals zero, there's going to be just one distinct root. Uh, sorry, one repeated root. There's going to be a repeated root. There won't be distinct roots. So the, the at least two distinct roots will start when y is greater than zero. Okay, so when y is greater than zero. So it's like, when y is between these values, okay, down to just before, just above zero. Okay, so we can say that the range of values for which is, this is true for k, the range is going to be k is going to be less than or equal to 4 over 9, e to the power of 4, and greater than zero. At zero, when k equals zero, there's, there's a repeated root. When k is above zero, then you will have you know, these two roots plus the root that comes here, there's an asymptote there where it, reach, it doesn't get close to zero. I mean, it doesn't quite reach zero. It's always above zero, but there will be a root somewhere along here. So there's going to be three roots, three roots all the way up to the point where the value of y is equal to 4 over 9 e to the power 4, in which case you have this root and this repeated root together. They make two distinct roots. Okay. So there we have the answer to question three part b so that type of question really needs you to picture what's going on and to read the question and understand what it means by at least two distinct roots okay so there's the answer to part b and that concludes this this question from the october 2022 p3 this is question number three done other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here other questions from this topic of uh, differentiation and also I'll put it under functions as well can be found in those two um, playlists and you can sub you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link thank you for watching and see you soon